man who means business and a man who means just for the people of Ghana. Northern region. Northern region. Please let's acknowledge Northern region. Savannah region. Okay, Northern region is pulled up. Please put your hands together for Northern region. Northern region is joining us all the way from Tamale. Savannah region. Is that Savannah region I see there? Savannah region. Please acknowledge Savannah region. Please acknowledge Savannah region. Bono East region. Please pull up Bono East region. Let's acknowledge Bono East region. Please put your hands together for Bono East region. Here they are. Bono East region is ready to hear the vice president and the future president, the incoming president, Dr. Mahamud Baumia. Do we have Bono region? Bono region, please pull up. Please put your hands together for the Bono region. Energy, 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 energy. Energy from Sunyane. All the way from Sunyane joining us in this conversation. Shall we have a half region? A half region. A half region. Please pull up a half region. And let's acknowledge a half region. Shall we have West? Okay, a half region is here. Please put your hands together for a half region. That right there is a digital region. Each of them are seated behind a computer. Please put your hands together for a half region. Each of them seated behind computers. You can see them, the digital region, a half region. Thank you very much, a half. Please put your hands together for Western North region. Shall we see Western North region right now? Western North region, please pull up Western North region and let's acknowledge them. Western North region all the way from Asankegua. That's Western region, Western region from Asankegua. Please put your hands together. For Western Region from Asankegua. That is Western Region for you. Please acknowledge Western Region. Shall we have Central Region? Central Region. Central Region. Have we seen Upper West Region already? Then let's see Upper West Region. Let's see Upper West Region. Upper West Region. Please put your hands together for Upper West Region. All the way from Wa. Thank you, Upper West Region. Energy all the way from Wa, Upper West Region. Now, the host region. And I'm sure I have mentioned all the 15 regions. I want to be sure. Eastern Region. Go for it. Are you there? Koforidia, are you there? Koforidia, all the way from the Baka Hotel, please. Pull up Koforidia, Eastern Region, so we can acknowledge them. Shall we have Eastern Region on our screens now? Eastern Region. We are still seeing Upper West Region. So please, show the love, more love for Upper West Region. More love for Upper West Region. Yes, yes, energy. Upper West, we see you, we see you, we see you. Upper West, we see you. The last region we have is Eastern Region. But before Eastern Region comes, shall we see the Ashanti region? Please, let's give it up for Ashanti. Ashanti, Ashanti, with your beautiful Ghana flags. Beautiful Ghana flags. Ashanti region, are you there? Ashanti region right there with your beautiful Ghana flags. Young, Hopeful people in Ashanti region with so much confidence that we are getting a president that is going to lead us into the future. Please give it up for Ashanti region. Their energy is plenty. Ashanti, we see you. Ashanti, we see you. Ashanti, we see you. Thank you very much. Now, the last region we haven't seen on the screen yet is Eastern region. If we don't see Eastern region, I cannot go home. So please make sure we see Eastern Region so I can go home. But until then, Mr. Vice President, incoming President, you have seated across this country thousands and thousands of young people ready to listen to you. And behind the screens and the computers and the TVs 
and the radio stations in their cars, in the pubs, in the lounges, and in their offices are millions and millions and millions of youth of this country who are counting on your leadership to take Ghana to the next level into the future. And they believe that whatever it is that you promise them, it is possible. It is. It is. We are in the Adenta constituency. And so please, let's put our hands together as we welcome the Deputy CEO of the National Youth Authority and the parliamentary candidate for the Adenta constituency, Akotia Lenu. Ministers of State, parliamentary candidates, the beautiful youth of Ghana, the incoming president, the man of possibilities, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. It is no accident that we are hosting the vice president and the incoming president in beautiful Bortiman. Our constituency, Adentan constituency, has seen numerous development projects initiated by the, the Nana Baumia administration. On behalf of our constituents, I say a very big thank you. Today is a remarkable day to be both a supporter of the new patriotic party and a proud Ghanaian. We are approaching the home stretch of an election that many considered was a foregone conclusion. Months ago, the theory was that December 7th will be a little more than a coronation. Many skeptics thought it will be a thankless and arduous task for the MPP to seek what it will um, seem as a third term. Yet here we are, just weeks away from one of the most remarkable comebacks in Ghanaian electoral history. For those familiar with Bill Clinton's story, Dr. Baumia is now the comeback kid of Ghanaian politics with his fresh ideas, bold solutions, message of hope, and the crowning achievements of the Nana Baumia administration. Ghanaians are once again resolved that on December 7th, we will march to protect our gains and propel our nation to the next level. After seven years in office, no government has stuck to its core mandates like the present one has. Despite the many global challenges we have been plagued with, we have delivered a nearly all significant campaign promises to Ghanaians. Though the NDC may not want to hear it, over five million children have received free senior high school education thanks to the visionary leadership of the Nana Baumia led administration. We have laid the primary building blocks needed to transform our economy from an analog structure to a digital one, as demonstrated by our digital initiatives championed by the Vice President. For Dr. Baumia, economic development is at the heart of his agenda. While economic development lacks a universally agreed definition, I define it as a process of economic growth based on expanding an economy's productive capabilities. Its ability to organize and more importantly, transform its production activities. 
Real productivity is measured by how much people must put in to produce a given output. Knowing this, it is easy to see how Dr. Balmier's digitalization efforts are geared towards economic transformation that will make Ghana globally competitive. How does he plan to do this? By respecting the Ghanaian people and delivering his message without insults, running an issues-based campaign that is genuinely unprecedented, We may have our differences, but every well-intentioned Ghanaian agrees that we do not need to see presidential candidates resorting to insults to make a point. Instead, we believe in the idea that let a hundred flowers bloom and a hundred schools of thought contend for Ghanaians who make a well-informed choice about the kind of president we want out of this contest. Ladies and gentlemen, for our Gen Z's at home, as we enter our voting booths, we'll make a choice. We'll decide between those who oppose free SHS and Dr. Baumia, who championed it. We'll decide between those who froze employment and Dr. Baumia, who helped create millions of jobs. The youth especially will have to decide if we want to join global digital revolution and compete on the international stage with its plan to train 200 youths in digital skills in the next four years, sorry, one million youths in digital skills in the next four years, or collect a cuckoo boom in Kukon Kitinkiti. We will choose a Ghana stuck in the past with Dumso or one that's, that is racing toward the future. We will need to decide if a man who insults anyone who disagrees with him and runs away from debates is truly the one who respects our democracy. As compared to Dr. Baumia, who speaks on his achievements and is ready to debate them. Today, the youth are eager to hear from the man himself once again. Across the country, we yearn to learn more about his bold solutions which will roll out and improve our lives, I urge all Ghanaians, especially our youth, to recognize that DMP does not only mean business, DMP means well-being for all of us. Once again, welcome to this transformative address, and together, let us support bold solutions for the future. On December 7th, I encourage all Ghanaian youth to vote number one, and that's on period. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please put your hands together for the Deputy CEO of the National Youth Authority and the Parliamentary Candidate for the Atlanta Constituency. Madam Akosia Menu, please do it again for her. Participating in this conversation are youth from various backgrounds. We have in this room apprentices from the Hairdressing and Dressmakers Association, please let me hear you. The Hairdressers and Dressmakers. We have in this auditorium barbers. We have mechanics. We have reps from Nooks, reps from USAC. We have reps from the Air South Seas and Greater Accra. We have representation from the caterers and the young people who are in the catering industry. We have diverse youth from different backgrounds participating in this engagement. And even more diverse are the thousands of youth we have in the various regions. We also have our students in the nursing and teacher colleges. The students from the nursing and teacher colleges also joining here. They are here to protect their nursing and teacher allowances. Please, let's welcome the national youth organizer of the new patriotic party, Mr. Salam Mustafa. Please put your hands together for Mr. Salam Mustafa, the national youth organizer.
you know, I, I thought that I was about to address a rally, so I nearly said, Kukrudu. And Choboy. Good evening, young men and women. And from across the world, and from the north to south, east to west, wherever you are watching us from, I say good evening to you all. It is with absolute delight that I stand here this evening as the national youth leader for the biggest party in Africa, the New Patriotic Party, proudly. to give these remarks as we prepare the way to listen to one of the most intelligent people, politicians that we have, smart, agile, caring, truthful, straightforward, credible, and by the grace of God, the incoming president of the Republic of Ghana. As the national youth leader for the NPP, I have traversed the vast lands of this country from north to south, east to west. I have had interactions with thousands of young men and women, my colleagues, thousands and tens of them. And all of these discussions, one thing runs through, jobs, employment, and lack of it. It is with joy that I stand here today that a leader recognizes this huge problem in our country and has decided to make it the front burner issue and what keeps him awake in the night. This shows that this is one true leader who will transform the lives of the young people of this great nation. I have said this so many times as I travel across meeting young people. Today, if we put a plane here and ask how many people want to go to the United States of America, this plane is going there. Almost everyone will run onto the plane. But I add that the United States of America, UK, Canada, Germany, angels and saints did not come down to build those countries. Human beings did. Today, Dubai is the most sought after holiday destination. It took the vision of one man, Sheikh Al Maktoum, to turn around one a bare desert into today the most sought after tourism destination in the world. My colleagues, friends, it takes vision to make a country great. And it takes the leader to do so. It is not the mindset of Nkuko and Kitty Kitty that can change a country. But bold solutions that traverse time and addresses problems. So today, we have a problem fixer, a thinker, a visionary who has said that for me, my presidency is going to be about addressing one of the most fundamental problems young people face in this country, jobs and employment. It is very sad when you go across and you meet able-bodied, healthy young men and women sitting at home doing nothing most of whom sometimes have graduated from a tertiary institutions. For me, it breaks my heart as a youth leader and a youth activist. And I am thrilled that it has touched the heart of another person 
who yearns to lead this country, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, and he says, the youth of this country, I am going to show you a plan. He says, I am going to show you a plan. It is possible. It is possible. It is possible. It is possible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Today, he had decided that he will speak to the young people of this great country of ours and let you know that all hope is not lost. There is light at the end of the tunnel and that there is a leader who can make it possible for you to thrive in this country. Therefore, I want to entreat you from wherever you are watching from, from the Upper East, Upper West, Ashanti, Western, Northeast, Greater Accra, wherever you are, let's listen to this great leader of ours. And let's go home believing that indeed it can take the vision of one man to have the youth of this country become some of the most competitive youth across the face of the universe and indeed it is possible it is for me and you all of us colleague young people we constitute majority of the voters registered today therefore it reasons that the next president of ghana is going to emanate from the youth what kind of leader are we going to elect to lead us and solve the problems that plague us it is a this is a decision that you and i would have to take and i can assure all of you that number one it is Thank you. Thank you. The differences are huge. And I will not even waste my time between Dr. Baumia and the others. The difference is clear. This in the roaring and the loudest roar that I can, that all of us young people, today, let's listen to this man. And let's believe that Ghana would work for us because it is possible and that this leader will make it. Thank you. Thank you. And God bless you all. Please put your hands together for Dr. Mahamudu Baumia for his visionary leadership for the good people of this country, especially for the young people of this country. We have the motto riders. Are you here, the motor riders? Please put your hands together for the motor riders for us. The motor riders are here with us. We have the young assembly members in Greater Accra. The assembly members who are young assembly members, put your hands together for the young assembly members in Greater Accra. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said earlier on, I indicated that we have across the country millions of young people who are participating in this event and let me indicate this is participation they are not just watching they are engaged just as we are here and this is only possible through digitalization digitalization is connecting communities connecting regions and connecting societies we are about to hear what is at stake for us in terms of job creation going into the future of Ghana. Now, I would crave your indulgence to ensure that whilst we listen to the Vice President, 
we have utmost concentration as we listen to him. At this juncture, the Gen Zs, the young persons in secondary school, the young persons aspiring to go, go to secondary schools, the apprentices, the young businessmen, young executives, and young entrepreneurs across Ghana watching, and for all of us here in this auditorium, please, let's be upstanding as we put our hands together and welcome the presidential candidate of the new patriotic party for the election 2024, Dr. Mahamudu Mahumia. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Please put your hands together for yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very, very much. This is so exciting to be here this evening. And I know that the youth of Ghana have joined us from all the regions, in Upper West, Upper East, Savannah, Northeast, Northern Region, Bono East, Bono, Ahafu, Western North, Western Region, Ashanti Region, Volta Region, Oti Region, Central Region, Eastern Region, and Greater Accra Region. Thank you all for making the time, and I wish I greet all of you. I wish you a very good evening. Fellow ladies and gentlemen, youth of this country, tomorrow will be exactly 12 months to the day I was elected by a clear majority of the new patriotic party to lead the party as its presidential candidate for the 2024 elections. 34 days from today, you, the millions of young people of Ghana, will form the majority among the 18.7 million voters who are expected to cast their ballots. Your task is to perform two simple but extremely important duties. One, choose a parliamentary candidate to represent your constituency in the ninth parliament. Secondly, you will be choosing the next president whose responsibility is to provide for your present to facilitate your future. From what I gathered in my interactions with you as I went round the country, 
I can sum up the priorities of the majority of you in three categories. Education, skills, and jobs. Once you have an education and you acquire employable skills, what is left is to thrive in an economic environment which can generate a large and expansive pool of good jobs with good pay. Whether as an entrepreneur, self-employed, or employee. In my conversation with you today, I will touch on all three and the business-friendly environment that my government, inshallah, will generate to make it all possible. I will outline the bold economic solutions that we plan to roll out, which will make it possible to create millions of jobs if I am given the mandate on December 7th, 2024. I have chosen this occasion to have a conversation with you, the young people of Ghana, mainly to remind you of the commitment I made to you exactly a year ago to make you my number one priority. My commitment is to transform Ghana, to build on the economic recovery we are witnessing by introducing bold business-friendly policy initiatives from January 2025, which are designed to stimulate significant economic activity. I am confident that these initiatives will create the large pool of diverse jobs that the young people of Ghana desire and deserve. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, just to give you a little indication about my faith in what is possible for us to achieve together, beginning January 2025, the growth of the Ghanaian economy has been revised upwards to 4% for 2024 and higher in 2025. To put it into perspective, the economy grew by a mere 3.4% in 2016, the last year under President John Mahama. In fact, in 2025, Standard & Poor's is more buoyant with their forecast at 5.4%. I am even more optimistic that it is possible to do even more if, with your vote, you elect me as your next president and we implement, and we implement my comprehensive business-friendly and job creation programs as outlined in the MPP manifesto, some of which I will highlight here. I'm seeing from the online numbers as I speak that more and more of you are watching and listening to me live across the country and beyond. I thank you for your attention. I know many of you will be voting for the first time next month. Indeed, eight years ago, many of you were too young then and therefore could not vote in 2016. Perhaps too young to remember self-inflicted crisis and homegrown hardships that my opponent put the nation through at a time when the whole global economy was rather stable and growing. You may not remember much that Ghanaians endured unforgiving doom so for well over four years. If we were lucky, the lights would come on some part of the day and off for a whole 24 hours the next day and so on. Barbers and hairdressers worked to earn just enough if they were lucky to pay for diesel for the small generator they had borrowed. 
the situation led to severe low productivity across board. Factories could not stay open for months, let alone 24 hours. And several Ghanaians lost their jobs as a result of the bad leadership choices of my opponent. The banks were bleeding. Some senior high schools had to shut down because the government refused to pay their feeding grant for two years. In 2016, just a few years after we became an oil producing country, Ghana's economy, to the shock of the world, suffered its lowest growth rate for more than a generation. The situation was so bad for young people that a new group was formed with the impressive with impressive membership nationwide. The name of that group was Unemployed Graduate Association. Coincidentally, the president then is the same man who is my opponent or who would be my opponent on Saturday, December 7th. I know some of you may not be too eager to vote. I do not blame you. If you have bought into the view that all politicians are the same and that your vote won't make any difference. But that is not so. I can tell you that your vote can make a big difference. I will tell you that I will tell you why we are all not the same and cannot be the same. I am not John Mahama. He is a former president and a former vice president and president. I am a vice president who has never been president before, who is asking you for the opportunity to lead and show what I can do if offered the opportunity this December. You can trust me to protect the public purse and use it selflessly to serve you. To the young voters of Ghana, I will say to you, do not switch off. I ask you to get involved. December is about you. December is about who can deliver for you, for your future, whom you trust, who has the integrity, the vision, the energy, the competence, the sense of where the world is today and your place in it, who has the humility to serve you and the decency not to insult you. I shall plead with you to make an informed choice. It is a choice between the one who had his chance and blew it and the other who is asking for a similar chance but to deliver with it, which is me. The decision is yours to make, not to bring back what, has, what was discarded in the past, but to vote for your future. If your priority is, as I suspect, about how to build strongly on the economic recovery that is before us, then I will plead with you to vote for me because of the vision and solutions that I have for you and the country and the leadership discipline and determination that I possess to see them through. My own core values, God-fearing, tolerance, tolerance, integrity, honesty, discipline, hard work, and inclusivity. My can-do attitude, my rejection of the tag of impossibility, my passion to unleash the creative energies of the youth, my compassion for the poor and vulnerable. All these align perfectly with the hopes and dreams of the young people of our country, rich or poor, north or south, educated or not, skilled or not, rural or urban. That is why I'm asking you to vote 
on December 7, 2024. Place your trust in me and I shall not disappoint you. As Vice President since 2017, I have not had the luxury to write my autobiography. So please make do with this short bio. I was born in Tamale on October 7th, 1963 to Alhaji Mumuni Baumia and Haji Amariyama Baumia. I attended Sakasaka Primary School in Tamale, Tamale Secondary School, Buckingham University in the UK for my first degree, Oxford University for my master's, and Simon Fraser in Canada for my PhD. I know what it's like to be unemployed. I have been a farm laborer before. I have been a taxi driver before. I have been a cleaner before. I've been a teacher, a technocrat, a banker, a running mate, a vice president, a father, and a husband. As a technocrat, I worked at the Bank of Ghana, rising to become deputy governor before entering into politics as Nana Adodan Kwakufuado's running mate in 2008. As vice president, during the period that the world faced its worst global health pandemic in modern history and the worst cost of living crisis since the Great Depression of 1933, I believe I have gone inside the oven and come out baked and ready to take over and lead to solve. I know firsthand the untold hardships we've, we have had to endure as Ghanaians, and I know what to do and what not to do in order to protect the gains we are making and to go on to build with agency on them. I opted for politics because I knew and even believe now more than ever that politics is a powerful tool for a greater good, but only if in the hands of a leader who means well, knows how and has what it takes to make a difference. I know I have the character, the experience, the vision, and the policies to address the concerns of the young people. And it is for this reason that I've asked to have this conversation with you today. Over this year alone, through my Youth Connect and other fora across the country, I have engaged with you, the youth, and listened to your fears, concerns, and aspirations. And I have been inspired by the ingenuity and can-do spirit of the Ghanaian youth. When I say to you today that your concerns and aspirations are my top priority items, I mean it from every sinew of my body. Indeed, I have been consistent right from the onset in making the destiny of the youth of Ghana my utmost priority. As I said in my acceptance speech as presidential candidate a year ago, and I quote, I have my own vision and my own priorities. <laughs> Given the opportunity by you, the people of Ghana, to lead, I shall govern as my own man with guidance from God Almighty. My vision is to build an inclusive, food self-sufficient, job-generating, data-driven and systems-based nation that will fully participate in the global digital revolution to solve our problems and also usher in a golden age of benefits from our natural resources. I want to lead a nation 
that improves and unleashes the talents of our youth and offers good jobs with good pay and sustainable growth with macroeconomic discipline. As presidential candidate of the new patriotic party, this is my commitment to the youth of Ghana. 